Hi there, and a very warm welcome to The Shed, the home of handmade props. Over the next three weeks, I'm gonna be showing you exactly what it takes to build a hero movie prop. Now for this example, we're gonna build ourselves a Harry Potter style wand, but a Harry Potter style wand with a bit of a difference. So I'm gonna guide you through the process from the receipt of the brief from the client, to design, construction, molding, casting, and finishing. Let's start with a brief. So this is a brief from a job I did last year and it's got a lot of information there about the deadlines, about the requirements for the quantity of ones that are needed and also a lot of information about the character and specifics about the prop itself. Now this particular prop needs to have a bone handle, it needs to have metallic or gold embellishments, it also needs a gem on there but the most important things here it needs to be feminine and glitzy. Right, let's start designing. Okay, so you've got all your drawing equipment ready. The key here is to just get pencil on paper. What you want to do is explore loads of different designs, as many as you can within the time you've got. So effectively you just rough out a design. When you find a design you really like, you can add more detail. Okay, so hopefully, after your drawing session, you'll end up with loads of different designs, some of which are throwaway, some of which you actually take a little bit further and actually add colour, a bit of shading, a bit more detail. Now this one here, nice design and I do like it, but it doesn't really fulfil the brief. I love the stone on the end there and I love the fluting there. I mean those two aspects actually do fulfil the brief. It doesn't quite look feminine enough. Look at this one here, it's getting there. And again with this one, it's sort of getting there. It's got the crystal but it isn't quite glitzy enough. These ones here, again, a little bit too masculine, but the key here is just getting ideas down because one of them's gonna take you somewhere, like that little stone design there. I love that little shape on the end and I've actually added a little bit more detail to this one and expanded a little bit on another sheet of paper and actually added skulls on there or faces. But what I did like are those little bobbly bits, which I will use on the final design, I think. Okay, so here we go. Pages and pages of designs. And most of them, funny enough, were actually based on sort of architectural features. Acanthus leaves there, very Egyptian. And I like this one as well, where you've got the sort of walnut insert there. And I like the tip of that wand as well. Now, I lay them out, so we've got loads and loads of different designs, some of which successful, some aren't. Now the key thing here is, these are your working drawings, no one else is going to see them, so don't be afraid to experiment. Now what I did, I actually chose one of the designs and worked on it, and I came up with this. Now this design here um, fulfills the brief, it's got a, a bone stroke ivory handle, it's got the gold embellishments there. And as per the brief, there's the gem. And there's detail of the one tip. Okay, so we've done the render. Now we need to create a production drawing. Now this drawing here is a little bit more detailed. It's everything's to scale, including the length of the one there and the tip. I've also included dimensional information and construction information. As you can see there, the two embellishments are gonna have pins and that's how they're gonna to attach to the handle. The one tip itself was a little bit on the thick side, so I've narrowed that to make the whole thing a lot sleeker. Let's compare the original concept drawing we did earlier on to the production drawing. As you can see, the main details there are very similar. Now, as the masters for this project were going to be 3D printed, I first had to create 3D models for each individual part.
So, once all the 3D parts were modelled, I created an assembly to give the director an idea of what the final prop would look like. The next job was to generate STL files, which I could then send over to my idea builder for printing. So with the 3D printed parts completed, we're ready to move on to the next stage of the process. Next week I'm going to show you how to prepare these parts for moulding, we're going to create a silicon mould and then we're going to create the final resin parts. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like, comment, share and subscribe. This has been Dave for Handmade Props and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care.